Let's take a look at another way that we can create a VDB grow simulation, this time using a point cloud to drive the growth. So I just have this bird figurine. This is from 3dscans.com. So if you wanna grab this 3D scan of this little figurine, you can grab it through there. Also gonna have this project file available on Patreon. So if you wanna walk step-by-step step how I did everything, see all the different individual settings, you can do it through that by getting the project files on Patreon. So grab that if you're interested, but let's go ahead and take a look at this. So like I said, we're gonna be using a point cloud to drive this growth. So let's create that. So we're gonna to do a point from volume. And we're gonna wire this into a null just to get rid of those guides real quick. You can leave this point grip configuration on grid or tetrahedral, it doesn't really matter to me. Just figure out what you would like. I'm gonna drop the point separation down quite a bit because we want to have a bunch of points in here to spawn some things on. I also wanna add some randomness to this. So let's just up the jitter scale and the jitter seed to break that up a little bit. Now I'm gonna use a technique that I used in a earlier growth video. So if you wanna take a look at that video, I will leave a card on screen now so you can take a look at that and get more in depth into how this all works. Let's go ahead and create this growth. So we'll do a color. We'll set this to black. I'm also gonna do a group node. And I'll uncheck this base group, keep in bounding regions, set this to a bounding sphere. Make sure we're set to points and visualize it. And I don't want this many points to grow along, so I'm going to drop this down quite a bit. Still too many there, let's drop it a little bit further. Maybe something like that. And then I'm gonna set a, another color node down and just set that to our group. So we've got some white points here that we're going to grow that color along all of these points. And the way we do that is with a solver node. And like I said, this is going to be a technique that I used in a earlier video. So if you wanna learn how to do that, check out that video. It's gonna go into more depth than what I'm gonna do right now. Let's do a point VOP. We're gonna use our first input as the point cloud that we have, and our second input is going to be the previous frame. Dive in the point VOP, give us some space here. We're gonna use a PC open, point cloud open. We'll wire up the point position, and then our previous frame into the file. Do a PC filter to grab our color of our previous frame. And then we'll wire that into a maximum node. We're gonna take a look at the maximum value of our previous frame versus what we got. And then a multiply constant, not a multiply, but a multiply constant. It'll put it in the right spot. And we'll make this a value greater than one so that it grows across our object. And then we're gonna clamp this to zero to one because we don't want it to go higher than one. So now if I click play, we should see some growth growing along our points, which we see, but it's moving a little bit slow. So let's go ahead and just up the search radius, make sure that it's grabbing every point that it can. And then we'll set this to like 50, press play here. And we're getting what we want a faster growth simulation. So we need to take these points and then we want to spawn some particles on them, um, some VDB particles that is, and there's actually a node for that. So VDB from particles. I'm gonna cancel this right away because it's gonna do some things that I don't want. And right away you can see that it is giving us this giant blob. We don't want that. We want to lower this point radius scale do this like 0.05, that's going to get rid of everything. That's because our voxel size is too large. It's above the size of our radius here. So we'll drop this to like 0.01. And you can see now that we have some little particles on our individual points. Now there is a slight issue here. We only want 
the particles to spawn on the particles that are white. And we would kind of like them to grow a little bit onto the, the scene. They don't want to just pop in. So let's jump in here. Let's separate out one of these channels of the color. So we'll do a vector to float. We'll wire this clamp in there. And that color really is just for a visualization to see what's going on. But let's take one of these values and we'll do a bind export. And we're gonna export this to P scale because that will change the size of the particles here. And we should be all good. You don't necessarily need to do this next step because if you see, get these little errors. It's because anything smaller than what we have as our voxel size, it's not going to, in the p-scale that is, any p-scale value smaller than our voxel size are not gonna show up because it's not able to um, to define them with the volume. But I'm just going to clean that up a little bit and let's do a blast node. And let's take a look at it. We'll do at p scale anything less than 0.2 should be fine. We want to delete those points. So now we're getting just the points that are a smaller value than 0.2 and we can take a look at that inside of our geometry spreadsheet. So you see that we got 0.2, Let's scroll down here all the way growing up until we get to a value of one. So that's what we're looking for. And if I go back to our particles, you can see that we have what we're looking for. So this is kind of the basics of this little growth simulation. Now there's a couple other things that we may want to do to that. Uh, basically, one of them being we want to just break this this smoothness up. Um, it's kind of blobby and weird. We also want to keep it in the shape of our original geometry. So let's just drop in a VDB from polygons. We'll wire in our original little bird here. Let's drop this to like 0 0.005. Should define it pretty well. Now there is a couple of things and we'll take a look at this here in just a moment. There's a couple of issues that you may run into when you're trying to set this all up and I'll show you kind of what they are and how I went around fixing them. So let's just define or confine this shape to the box of this one. So we can do that using a VDB combine node wire this up here and we don't want to copy a we want to do something like an sdf sorry not a union but a intersection and this is going to confine this first input to the the bounding area or bounding geometry or volume i should say of our second input so you can see if I kind of scrub through here now, it's going to grow along the shape of our second input. And it's not going to, to go past that. It kind of gets rid of that little blobbiness that we got going on. But you may run into some issues when you're doing this. Let's go ahead and just jump into the actual scene with everything cached out. And we can take a look at some of this. So I have our cache here, just essentially the same thing. Just a bunch of points, a little blobbiness going on. Now there's a node here. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this for the moment. If I just enable this volume noise SDF, this is gonna add some noise to the shape of our object. And that's good because we wanna just break up kind of that blobbiness. You probably don't want that blobbiness. So you can use this volume noise SDF to change this shape just kind of like a mountain node for volumes but let's see if i drop in a vdb combine node here there's a little bit of an issue that we have here if i wire in our inputs i'm going to set this to a intersection and again this is just our bird geometry in here so let's give this a second um, it's actually kind of doing one of the, the issues that you may run into here, and that is 
it's kind of just breaking the volume, which doesn't really work, but also you can try and fix this by just expanding the shape that we have here. You can do that with the volume reshape SDF set to dilate, just increase that a little bit. And it's kind of gonna just bloat this out. And sometimes that'll work, sometimes it doesn't. Certain frames, see again, it broke it in a different way. So this may or may not work. You may have to do something else, which for me was just converting it to polygons. So I just cached out again, converted it to polygons. Same with our bridge geometry, just to give us a little bit of a cleaner mesh here. And I just Boolean this out. And actually, let me just cancel that Boolean since I have that cached out as well. You can see that I have this set to a subtraction and that creates this sort of breakage along the geometry. So this is how I went about it um, and it doesn't work. There's a couple frames where it actually kind of broke. Uh, 31 is one of them. I tried to fix it a couple different ways, uh, but it didn't, didn't really work. But for most of the other frames, this worked. I think all but like three frames, this method worked. So what I'm doing from this point on, uh, this basically separates out uh, the growth into its own mesh. And then we can just kind of blast away the other parts. So if I take a look at this, I just have a black color set up with a point group. And this point group is just some, some of the points that are in the initial growth here. So this, like, let me look. So back at frame one, this volume noise. So they would fall within this little bounding area of this geometry, if that makes any sense. So I set them into a group and then I'm using a distance along geometry with these starting points set as um, this group two, the ones that I just created. And in here, I just have this output mass set to CD. And this is set to constant with a value of one set to zero or a all the way a distance of one set to a value of zero. So it'll be set to just straight black. Everything else is gonna be white in the red channel, otherwise known as just straight red. And what that allows me to do is drop down a blast node, anything with a value of less than one in the red channel, I'm just getting rid of. So as I play through here, you can see that it's kind of growing along. And then we do run into a couple issues. Um, like I said, on frame 31, it doesn't really work. This is my attempt at fixing it um, with some methods. I decided just to get rid of the two frames or three frames that it didn't really work on. This I think was another one of them. Yeah, so this is a, this is a little bit of a better visual representation of what's going on. So at frame 35, we have this. And then 36, the Boolean doesn't work exactly how you would expect it to. Uh, for some reason, it's connected. Um, again, not really sure where, and it's just easier to get rid of these frames if there's not that many. Um, but you may may not be able to do that depending on your situation. It seemed to work for mine though. So uh, you can also do some some retiming in Houdini that should be able to clean things up a little bit for you as well if you do choose to get rid of a couple of frames. But basically this distance long geometry just allows me to isolate this sort of section that is uh, essentially just this noised out th portion. So if I were to do like a VDB combine, actually let's do it without the noise because that broke stuff. Actually, I still have this node. So if I go back here, just wire this in. It's basically just this, but with our geometry. So you can see they're pretty similar pretty similar here, obviously a little bit different just because I have some noise that's being applied after, after this little cache. And then I'm just adding a polyfill in here just because there were some frames that had a polygon or two that were missing. Just set that to single polygon, should be all good. 
I just got rid of the color and then cache this back out. And you can see, let's see, let me un solo this or un template that, I mean. See, with this final growth animation, it looks pretty decent. Just kind of growing along. There's a couple frames where it kind of skips a lot. Uh, so you may want to just be aware of that and uh, adjust that fine tune it as you may need. But this kind of worked for my situation. Then we just have our materials applied, but that's kind of the basics of how I went about creating this. Like I said, this available, this project file will be available on Patreon if you want to grab that, kind of walk through things a little bit easier. Um, you will have to probably re-export uh, these VDBs since Patreon doesn't allow you to up upload things of a certain size. So you have to go through that again, but all the settings should be the same here. So should be should be all good with that. And you can take a look at a step-by-step, node-by-node, setting-by-setting uh, look at how I created this this effect. But that is pretty much the basics of it. Uh, like I said, it's a little finicky once you get to this little volume growth step. But after that, um, try a few different things, the v VDB combined nodes as well as your Boolean. And you should be able to get to something that works and looks pretty decent. So anyways, hopefully this helped you out. And uh, I do have a bunch of other videos on Houdini. And if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure you check those out. Like I said, Patreon, if you want to learn more about uh, VDB growth, I've been doing a lot of stuff on growth simulations. So take a look at that if you want to learn more about those. A bunch of other stuff that I got planned for that. So just keep an eye out on that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.